So we've got a pretty straightforward setup. We have an anterior portal established. And this anterior portal is really one of the, the last portals that I make because I want this to work double duty for us. Not only will it allow us to place our anterior glenoid anchor, but it'll also aid in suture passage and retrieval as we come back. Now our lateral portal, we do this just anterior to the 50 yard line. Uh, and we draw that line at Navisor's portal and we divide the acromion in half. We've pre-prepped this glenoid. You can see I've left the superior labrum intact. We have our anterior uh, anchor there. And by convention, I use two different colors uh, of suture. So we have a black stripe up front, and then our posterior one, we've got a uh, solid blue. Just a quick demo as to how we got here. So we can take a look, and you can see this is a curved guide, and I actually use a 1.8 double loaded. And in the early days of my SCR experience, what we did was we left both those in there in case we had a dog ear or a little bit of a wrinkle in the graft, and you could use that. And you can see the angle here. You want to make sure that you have this type of view where you can see the glenoid very clearly, and you want to ensure that you're not going to burr or drill through the articular cartilage of the glenoid. So you can see now we're viewing through our lateral portal, and I'm going to get my orientation here. We can see our glenoid, and you'll see through the posterior portal. I'm going to come in here, and you can see this was the angle that we used in order to seat our secondary suture anchor. And the idea here is to take the complexity out of the system. And what I want to demonstrate is how we build our shuttles. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this through our lateral portal. And you can see I'm going to drive up here. We're going to grab one and one and only suture limb. So we're going to bring that through. I'm going to pull plenty of slack out of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to place our second suture. Again, I'm going to come posterior and I'm gonna grab one limb and one limb only of this blue. And we're gonna bring that forward. So we're gonna walk the graft over, we're gonna place it on our tegaderm. We happen to do our measurements and typically this tends to be trapezoidal in its shape. Uh, if your infraspinatus is intact and in certain cases, it'll actually be either a rectangle or it'll be a reverse trapezoid. And it all depends on how your footprint looks. It depends on what residual cuff tissue is still there. Uh, and I think it's important to understand the nuances of the graft itself. There's actually a mark here. And what I want that mark to be is where the needle exits. You can tell we've got a very, very tough piece of dermal tissue here. We're gonna steal a little trick from Joe Burns of SCOE and we're gonna tie a stick knot. So you're gonna make a little loop and you're gonna twist this suture enough times where it almost cuts your finger off. And then once, once you get to that point, you're going to place the limb through and then you're going to dress this. And it's basically a big, ugly, messy knot. And notice I'm being very diligent to keep these suture limbs separated. What I found is it's actually really convenient to leave a wick of suture coming off the knot stack itself. We're going to fold this thing up like a Los Angeles taco. And like that. what that'll do is it'll ensure easier passage through the graft. And again, we're not rushing here. This is the, the, the pain point of the procedure. We want to make sure that this thing comes in smoothly and works really, really well. Now, remember, acellular dermis is inherently stretchy. It has give to it uh, and it has some play. And so when I do this, I tend to like a line to line measurement for this. The reason that I like a why not 1.8 is you look at strength profile and strength characteristics and they're high. They're much higher than let's say a 3.0 push in anchor like we used to use back in the day. And I tend to, to, to like these and favor these because their, their characteristics in both the glenoid and the humeral footprints are ideal. They, they just work really well in that type of bone. You can see we put these anchors a little bit more medial than some, some folks would. Some will put them right on the rim, but I want that bony contact of the graft. I want a good ingrowth surface because I don't want this failing on the glenoid side. What I like to do is leave that glenoid intact because I want as much as I can in terms of this thing being uh, stable, this thing having as much uh, as we can get out of it in terms of uh, superior migration uh, basically being canceled out. And then you'll see once I tie my last knot here, and again, just an SMC followed by reverse altering half inches on alternating posts. Once I have that, we'll cut it. We'll kind of zoom out and I'll show you how we've turned this now into a rotator cuff uh, tear. And you can see our humeral footprint here. And you know, you just get the sense of where this is going to lay down on the humerus. We're staring at a rotator cuff tear from the 50 yard line. And we've got stability to this graft. So a couple, a couple little pearls here with this. What you'll see is I'm going to come in. We're going to grab the anterior aspect of the graft, and then we're going to pull this into a position. And what I'm looking at is what does my contour look like? I want this to be under tension. I want this to have a nice reverse hammock effect. And so again, what we're going to do is use the not RC. This is a self-punching anchor. Uh, go ahead and unload your tiger blue. Uh, and uh, one of the things that you can do is you can actually tie these down as you go. 
Uh, and what that does is that'll give you now three points of fixation on the SCR graft. I'll take a ring, let's tie this down, and then we'll get our insight to tensioning. Again, my favorite cutter in the world that works almost like a little katana. I'm looking, that looks to be about the spot. And then I'm checking my tension. Does that look like appropriate tension? I think we're going to be in good shape here. I really like the uh, self uncleating nature of the Why Not RC is it just makes for a little bit smoother transition in the operation. Yeah, and again, this is an operation where you do not want to rush. This is, this is one where this is likely the patient's last opportunity at getting a good outcome with a deficient cuff, uh, save for an arthroplasty procedure. Uh, the worst outcome that you could have with this would, would be to have a floppy, incompetent graft. And if you use this technique and you, you do the dynamic in situ tensioning, you'll always have a graft that's tensioned appropriately. And you can see the contour of the graft to the humeral footprint. And that's why I like these simple sutures. The vector of pull, you see, see what that does there? The vector of pull, it, it's going to pull it towards where you want it to be pulled, and it's going to give you nice overall tension. We take a look, and we've got a good overall view here. We've got great contour to the glenoid. We can see our suture anchors nicely tied. We've got excellent overall uh, tension of that graft. And we can do a little internal external rotation. We can see that graft move with us. And then again, superior migration of the humerus here, nice and well controlled.